All right, welcome in everyone. Welcome to Match Day Minus One, latest edition uh, presented by PointsBet, Austin FC's founding partner, coming to you live from St. David's Performance Center, Austin FC's uh, nerve center of operation. I'm Adrian Healy, in esteemed company once again, completing the hat trick. Sonny G, I'm wearing a fine hat. Oh, and I the love, hat trick with lo you. Love the camo, love the camo look, it's, Sonny. It's the uh, Cedar Park in me. <laughs> The, the, the Verde coming through as well. Uh, Sonny's uh, still here in place of Mr. LaHood, who seems to be on an eternal lifelong honeymoon. Touring every single <laughs> island in the... Uh... More islands than actually exist in Fiji. So uh, he, he will be back soon. Sonny joining me in the booth tomorrow for uh, the English language coverage of uh, Austin RS. So we'll get into a preview of that and the LAFC. Austin on the verge of a big road trip here. Um before we get that, let's let's look at the big picture and where we are. But let's start by getting your immediate reaction to Sunday. I haven't had a chance to talk to you about that. You were calling the game on the radio. I got the the, the uh, day off, was able to sit in the stands and bake and, and bake. watch the defeat to uh, the Galaxy. So just quick takeaways. Any 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 lessons learned for the Verde from the, from that home reverse? Yes. Let's forget about the game. Yeah. Uh, wasn't move our on. team. <laughs> wasn't our best performance. Everybody could tell that. Um, we didn't create as much chances. We didn't physically look as strong as we nope. were normally doing. So for me, it's just, I mean, one of the hardest things about being a soccer player is being consistent. Mm. It sucks that we were inconsistent with such a big game uh, and all the hype around the game. But turn the page, two big games coming up mm. that could uh, kind of – set you apart yes really, either way yeah absolutely uh i think they will they will take that uh, you know in a way good it happened at this stage in the season Sonny. still relatively early you take just your second defeat but when you look at the big picture you know, 10 games in there we are on 20 points two points a game is it's a, it's a great pace to set so overall this first quarter and a bit of the season has to be has to be considered a, a, a monumental success for uh both for the playing staff and for Josh Wolf and his coaching staff. No, I agree. I think overall, not only the points, um, the I know I talked about attitude earlier, but overall for, for these games, the demeanor of the team, the way that the team kind of looks like they're becoming a family, mm. looks like it's, it's helping a lot. I think the substitutions are better. I think there's more depth in the team. Uh, people are fighting for positions. We're scoring goals. There's a, a ton of positives. So, of course, we, we don't like to lose. But in the big picture, we're, we're definitely doing a lot better. I'm going to throw some numbers your way, not to get too mathematical on you. But, yeah, we're on 20 points. You want, yeah, you, you often think teams break seasons down into uh, different phases. And I think they do, really. They look at, you know, we, we looked about the month of April and uh, what, what was possible there. But we're on 20 points. You look historically... What does it take to reach the playoffs in MLS? And that's a stated goal, and I think a very reasonable one for this club to make the playoffs in year two. I'll tell you what it takes. It takes about an average of 48 points. That's exactly what it took in the West and the East last year. So if you use that as the high watermark, we're nearly halfway there. It's uh, a good sign. <laughs> we have 24 games left. We've got to get possibly 28 points uh, to make the playoffs. A little more than the point a game. When you when you look at it like that, that's what a good start gives you, isn't it, Sonny? Yeah, I think it, it gives you confidence that you're still there. Mm -hmm. You're not... There's some teams that I feel like are already like feeling like may have play, playoffs could be maybe next year already because yeah. they're, they're, so, they're so far behind. So I think we're in a great spot. These, these games coming up, true tests, we're going to have to get some points. Um, and... Looking back at the big picture, I, I think it's great, but not complacent. Mm. Uh, I would definitely want to not only think about getting into the playoffs, but how far can we get so we can possibly get a home game. Mm. What's what's impressed you most, most about the job that Josh Wolf and the, and the coaching staff has done? What do you see as you look at it with your with your players' focus? What do you see as as the, as the biggest as the biggest difference thus far? Because they look at it as a as a solid continuum. It's just this is the, 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 the end result of the work we started last year and it's continued through the offseason. No, I agree because there wasn't like a lot of changes within mm. the players. So you've got to give credit obviously to Josh because not a lot of players were changed. Even though they brought in new players, not a lot of those players are starters as of yet. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely a good on coaching job. 
and I think players are just kind of rising to the occasion. I don't know if it's because they're gelling better with their teams or they're becoming more confident, but a lot of our players hadn't played in MLS before. Right. So it does take some time to get used to the league, get used to different country, different players, different heat, whatever you want. So I think our some of our players are starting to, to shine through, and it's it's making a huge difference. All right. Road trip. Road trip. Uh, Austin players are here today. It's a David's last training session before they get on the boat. They're actually not leaving until uh, tomorrow morning, which is interesting. So they've got this two-game two game road swing, uh, both of them, to very testing places. Uh, we'll we'll break down each of the each of the games, but just just your overall thoughts about what these next four or five days are going to be like, Sonny, uh, for a team who struggled so long to win on the road and then have done it twice in a row in tough places as well. DC and Houston are never easy places to go and win, and in both games fell behind. In in the case of DC, by two goals and still found a way to come back. That has to be. A positive heading into this uh, this road swing. No, it does. I just hope we're not coming from behind. <laughs> but I well, think, yeah. yeah, we at least have to get three points. Yeah. If we want to say that we're a contender, I think it's fair to say three points would be, we'd be sitting in a good spot, especially mm. against those two teams that are in playoff positions and are playing well. Yeah. Yeah. RSL uh, first. Let's, let's think about that game Saturday night. Um, there they are in fifth place, just uh, just four points behind us. Um, made the playoffs last year. They're, they're always a team who seem to be somehow uh, one of those teams where the sum is greater than the or the whole is greater than the sum of their parts. Uh, Pablo Mascherani always seems to have them punching a little bit above their weight, and with one glaring exception this year, the six nil thumping at New York a couple of weeks ago, they've been they've been mighty competitive, haven't they? That just shows you that you don't necessarily need big names to compete mm. if everybody's on the same page um he, he does a great job with his teams they don't mm. get scored on a lot teams that don't get scored on a lot make games difficult and sometimes i mean they've got players who can score goals bobby wood is, is always yeah. around the box always looking and lurking around so that they they become dangerous when you don't score because eventually you're going to have to Shots are going to be taken on you. Mm. And if they're able to capitalize and do a great job defensively, which they have done, makes it very, very hard. Yeah. What do you remember about the, the Austin game there last year at, uh, at Rio Tinto? Uh, I'll remind you, Julio Cascante got a very dubious red card. I, I do remember that. Half. Bobby Wood scored and went off to uh, kiss, his, kiss his baby afterwards. <laughs> I remember that. That was that, Those were times that I like to forget about now. Right. I think Julio Cascante's... He's one of those players that shines through now. Yeah. I think he's turned the page completely, and he's becoming one of our most sturdy defenders in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Scoring goals, doing a great job playing defense. Very little mistakes yeah. whatsoever. So it's good. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, when you look at our stats so far, the 22 goals, second top scorer in the league stands out, doesn't it? But I think maybe even the biggest story is is the defense having conceded only nine in 10 games and that and as you say that Gascante Gabrielson partnership central defensive partnerships can sometimes take a while can't they to really bond tightly but it seems like those two have been they're, on the same they're wavelength. not letting up yeah no they've been on the same wavelength since day one since second one and I kind of like the the changing of the outside backs yeah if, if it's a position that requires a lot of running so if we've got four sets of outside backs who are competitive, I think it makes our team strong, um, and they don't get tired. If you make the sub at the right time, our team looks great throughout the whole game. So yeah, it yeah. helps. So uh, RSL, like us, weren't in action during during midweek because they lost in the Open Cup uh, to the Northern Colorado uh, hailstorm. That's a, <laughs> a couple of weeks before uh, at home, so uh, so they'll be they'll be rested. They're coming off a, a two nil loss in Nashville last weekend. Um, it, there are there are there are points there for the taking for sure. Uh, LAFC is what they then face, so they will stay in Salt Lake City Saturday night, Sunday. They'll fly straight to LA, not coming back to Austin, and then they'll have a full two days in LA to prepare for uh, what as we sit here right now, is a, is a top-of-the-table clash. Um, first of all, do you like that as a player? Do you like that? I've been talking to players here this week, and they're actually excited to get away together as a group for the first time, for, for a you know, four- or five-day period, which they haven't had. No, it's, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't even make sense to fly back because right. of where 
LA is um, in terms of Salt Lake. So it's a smart decision. And I think it's, I mean, the MLS season is just so long. Mm. There's, there's not a lot of breaks. Um, and even when there is breaks, there's games being played and friendly games. So anytime that you can kind of like just chill out with your teammates, I think it's a, a win-win. And of course, who doesn't want to chill out with their their teammates in, mm. in in Los Angeles? Yeah, and then LAFC. I mean, a lot of people might have re- might have preferred the games to be the other way around, the LAFC to be the big Saturday night primetime game. But maybe it suits Austin better to to have those two days in LA to prepare for uh, what at the moment is the best team in the league. Mr. Carlos Vela, Mr. Chucho Arango, and, and that's a different team. So you yeah. have Salt Lake, not a lot of stars, plays yeah. well, defends great. Then you got a team who every player offensively is extremely dangerous, and you have to watch out for all of them. Yeah. So big tests for sure, and two different, two completely different games for the team. They got their stars, but the interesting thing is, two players who've made a big difference from this year, like Austin, were signed from within MLS. Ilya Sanchez and. Kellen Acosta, and they've really come in and strengthened that midfield. So that, that sparks are going to fly at Bank of California Stadium. I cannot wait for Wednesday night against the LAFC. No, that's going to be. I a, think it's going to be wide open. I really do. Arguably the best game of the season so far. Uh, could be, could be. Um, we saw Philly go in there and get a two-two draw. Both teams, by the way, that Austin are playing on this road trip, undefeated at home so far. So we can time, change that. Time to change that. Yeah, yes. that's right. Um, Sonny's Sentimiento. Um, Keys to the game. Let's just focus on Saturday night, shall we? What what do Austin have to do against the, that sort of challenge that you've outlined? Um, they played well there at spe- in, in, at times last year, even though it ended up being a lopsided one nil defeat. They, they, they had chances, and RSL will give you chances. They're not, yep. they're not impervious defensively, are they? <laughs> I'd say just looking back at the the two previous games, first mm. and foremost, not to get scored on in the first fifteen minutes. Yeah, that hurts. Um, Trying to just come back from a game is not fun. So yeah, that's that would be my first and foremost. My next one would be, could we attack a little bit more, go at people 1v1s, see if uh, we could uh, cause some damage in there. Yeah. I think it's... Wing play particularly exactly. is what you're looking for. Once we get in the ball on the outside and you find yourself 1v1, can we look to take them on? We, we score a lot of goals off of crosses, mm. off of passes back to players. So I mm. think it's it's... We could be dangerous there. Mm. And then I think our, our transition, because we're playing away. We're probably going to sit a little bit further back. But can we transition quickly to catch uh, Salt Lake off guard? Mm. Can they get Danny Pereira? But it, it was noticeable to me last week that Galaxy not only honed in on Sebastian Drusi. I mean, he's an obvious target to try and stop. But now teams are, I think, looking at Pereira and trying to stop him too. And, so how, do you, so how do you counteract that? They, yeah. they they got two yellow cards yes. when he was breaking lines and yeah. they're stopping the play as close to midfield as possible because I think they know how dangerous he is carrying the ball. Yeah. So I think, I mean, teams nowadays, there's uh, cameras for everything. So um, it uh, it makes it easy to to kind of know what yeah. you have in front of you. So definitely yeah. studying. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, can, can, uh, talk, just final final thought on that. Yellow cards, actually, it's something that Josh Wolf is going to have to uh, be careful with. Could both Danny Pereira and Alex Ring, both on four yellows, either of them get one more, they have to sit out the LAFC game. So it'll be interesting to see how he kind of manages manages that situation. How many? Do you know how many yellow cards you could get before they eliminate one? It's one more, yeah. Well, well before they take one yeah. off, well, the, yeah, you get five, then you, and then you automatically set out a game, and then you, then you start again. So, um, so lots to look forward to. Let's finish with uh, a moment of gratitude, and um, I think I think it's high time the Austin FC medical staff got a big shout out, led by Aki Tajima. They had their work cut out just a couple of weeks ago in Houston where they faced a goalkeeper uh, with uh, lacerations with his leg dangling off yes laceration well actually I had Brad Stuver on the um, ATX FC spaces yesterday and he was telling me that that cut was down to the bone on on uh, on that afternoon in Houston and what what a job that Aki had to do with the medical team. They they had to basically stay overnight in Houston, and, and now he's back on the field. Yeah, now he's now he's all bandaged up and ready to go. So a moment of gratitude to the Austin FC at medical staff for all the great work that they do, and a moment of gratitude to Mr. Sonny G. We are done. Sonny uh, is going to be joining me in the booth tomorrow uh, on the English language coverage of Austin at RSL uh, pregame show at eight p.m. So it's a late one. With the one and only Roger Valdivieso joining us too. And then 
kickoff at 8.30. All of that is on the CW in Austin. Uh, live coverage of the game on uh, Saturday night. And then Wednesday night will be over on KBVO with the Austin LAFC game. And that kickoff is at 9.30. So I hope to see you for both of those. Thanks so much, Sonny. Always a pleasure, man. We'll see you. Great stuff. See you tomorrow. Thanks, bud. See you.